was hardly known. Gurudev said that only after his disappearance now we're able to think about what his deep mission is, what his internal reason is for coming. And of course we know that without Srila Gurudev, we would not be able to think about Srila Prabhupada's internal mission. He said that our Srila Prabhupada, when he came to the West, because there was already a plan up in Goloka Vrindavan with Srila Gurudev, Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Brigand Keshav Goswami Maharaj, our Srila Prabhupada and others, exactly what would take place in this world. So when Srila Prabhupada came to the West, he called to Param Gurudev and said, Look, come on, I'm making a platform for you so that soon you will be very easily worshipped all over the world. Srila Prabhupada's glory is not that he established his kind, Srila Gurudev said. And as Sri Padmanabharash mentioned, we're speaking in memory of Srila Gurudev's beautiful glorification of him. Rather, his glory is that he gave nothing new but the same old wine in new bottles. In fact, in his introduction to Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada wrote that some people say that we are very fortunate that A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj has established Krishna consciousness in America. But that is not the fact. This is a very old movement coming from Brahma. The first Iskan Guru is Lord Brahma, and he passed the knowledge to the second Iskan Guru, that is Narad Muni, who travels all over the universe, or universes, playing on his veena, Radhika Ramana Name, and chanting Hare Krishna, and uh, bringing in millions and millions of disciples into the Krishna consciousness movement, like Dhruv Maharaj, like Pralad Maharaj, and so many others. Then the ISKCON movement passed on gradually to Madhvacharya, gradually to Madhavendra Puripad, who was the sprout of the desire tree of Madhuri Ras in our Brahma Madhva Sampradaya. And then the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, chose to appear in this Sampradaya, making it the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. Then that ISKCON mission became known as Vishva Vaishnava Raja Sabha under the presidency of Srila Rupa Goswami, or he started it and put Jiva Goswami as the president. Visva means world, Vaishnava Raj means pure devotees, Vishva Vaishnava Raj Sabha means society, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness gradually came down through our acharyas like Narottam Das Thakur, the Six Goswamis, Narottam Das Thakur, Kusunath Chakravarti Thakur, down to Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and then, in Srila Gurudev's own words, at the time of Srila Bhaktivinoda Sarasvati Thakur Prabhupada, he was the Iskan Acharya. So in this way, confirming Srila Prabhupada's and Srila Gurudev's words that ISKCON is not a new movement. In fact, Srila Prabhupada wrote that the Krishna Consciousness Movement is present in many, many universes throughout Lord Brahma's creation. In every day of Brahma's life, 
throughout many, many creations, this Krishna consciousness movement is there. So then, as you heard from Sri Pad Padmanabh Maharaj, it became known as, under Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, it became known as Sri Gaudiya Mai, which means the same thing. And then later, as Gaudiya Vedanta Samiti, which means exactly the same thing. International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And what is Krishna Consciousness? If anybody has seen our Srila Prabhupada's Hindi books of his Srimad Bhagavatam and other literatures, Chaitanya Chari Kamrita, we see that the International Society for Krishna Consciousness is called Krishna Bhavanamrita in Triastriya Sangha. Krishna Bhavanamrita is a book by Srila Visnath Chakravarti Thakur, all about the very intimate pastimes of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna in Sindhavan. So this is actually what Srila Prabhupada came to establish. Srila Gurudev gave so many lectures about Srila Prabhupada and his ISKCON all throughout the uh, various Western countries in his travels. And once in Los Angeles, around 2001, he said that our Srila Prabhupada named his ISKCON movement after one very special verse in the Raya Ramananda Sambhad. Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Mati Kriyatam Yari Kutopi Lamyate That is Taksha Molam Abhiru Mudyame Kalam Chandra Koti Sukritai Nalabhyate Krishna Consciousness or what is Krishna Consciousness? Braj Bhakti. Who is Krishna? One of the four verses that Srila Gurudev employed to show the meaning of Srila Prabhupada's um, Pranam Mantra, Gauravani Pacharani. One of the four main verses is Araja Bhagavan Vrajeshantanayas Tadhama Vrindavan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's opinion, his only worship of the Lord is Vrajeshantanayas the son of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yasoda, who, when he came from her womb, cried out, ka, ka, ka. And as he grew up, had so many uh, mock fights and wrestling matches with Sridham and other coward boys. And Sridham would win and sit on the chest of Krishna and say, I won. And Krishna would look up to him and say, no, I won, because my nose is up and your nose is down. So it's this Krishna that is the Krishna consciousness movement. And Araja Bhagavan Vrajeshitanayas Tadana Vrindavanam Ramya Karshit Upasanam Vrajabhadu Bhargena Jakalpita The devotional practices and moods manufactured, this is Prabhupada's words, manufactured by the gopis is the ultimate goal of life and is the highest worship. So this is the Krishna consciousness movement that uh, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Gurudev quoted Srila Prabhupada as saying that I have named my Krishna consciousness movement after this verse by Srila Rupa Goswami Srila Rupa Goswami is saying that if you perform many, many millions of births of either spiritual pious activities or even regulated by the bhakti, you will not attain the perfection of braj bhakti, which is the ultimate goal of life. Only by uh, having in one's heart intense greed for that Braj Bhakti, which is attained by hearing from Braj Rashik Tajvakyan 
Vaishnavas. The pastimes of Radha and Krishna can one attain that highest perfection? And Srila Prabhupada, in his purports to explaining that verse, said that um, Rupa Goswami is saying, if you can purchase Krishna consciousness anywhere, there are so many societies that there are pure devotees. And if you can purchase Krishna consciousness anywhere, that kind of Krishna consciousness, the only price for it, I remember I was sitting with Srila Prabhupada in his very first Iskand temple at 26th Second Avenue, 1966, when there was a picture of uh, young Krishna sitting on the rock, and Prabhupada said, we are not interested in going to Vaikuntha. We're interested in associating with Krishna sitting on the rock. And he then, at that time, he quoted that Rupa Goswami said the only price for it is the anxiety to have it. So if you can purchase it anywhere, then purchase it without delay. I remember in a Kishori moment, Prabhu's father, my dear godbrother Matula Dish Prabhu, he was one of the editors of Srila Prabhupada's books back in the 1970s. And he told me that when he was looking at the manuscript of the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada had written that there are many societies where one can attain the association of pure devotees. Any society that's like the Krishna consciousness movement. And then, in the final editing of that book, it states, it's a great hallucination to think that anyone can become Krishna conscious outside of ISKCON, outside of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So a little change there. So uh, then Srila Prabhupada, as Sri Padma mentioned, is one of the founders of that Gaudiya Vedanta Samiti, the Vedanta the end of all knowledge, which is Gaudiya Vaishnavism, which is those teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Anarpita Chaling Chalat Krunaya Vatir Namakula. That is, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give what no other incarnation or acharya ever gave before, since the last time Mahaprabhu came, which is the previous day of Brahma, which is to taste the service, Krishna wanted to taste the love and service and happiness of Srimati Radhika, which is 10 million times greater than his happiness. And he wanted to give the Shriyam. In Prabhupada's word for word translation of that verse, for Shriyam, he wrote treasure. And as we know, treasure chests are usually locked. So, Srila Gurudev unlocked the treasure of Srila Prabhupada's books. They were already unlocked to some extent, but then as Srila Gurudev said, there was a treasure chest within that treasure chest of Srila Prabhupada's books, which only the Mahabhagwa had the key to. And then he opened up that treasure chest of Srila Prabhupada's books for us. Sometimes I feel pinched when I hear some people say that Srila Prabhupada only gave the ABCs of Krishna consciousness. We find that in the world which was completely black, in the entire Western and Eastern worlds, except in some place in India where the um, Gaudi Vedanta Samiti and before that, Gaudiya Mat was going on strongly. Otherwise, the whole world was black, not knowing about even the name of Krishna. I didn't know the name of Krishna, or that God was a person, as did millions of others, until we met Srila Prabhupada. So, he showed us 
the beginning of Krishna consciousness. Yes, you're not your body. God is a person. I remember once in 1966 in 26 2nd Avenue, Srila Prabhupada was giving an analogy. And he said, the Mayavadis say that we're all God. And that now we're doing some talking. What is self-realization? And this and that talking. But then when one becomes fully self-realized, then there's no more talking. One becomes silent. So Prabhupada gave the analogy, or said, if you're going to give an analogy, because they give the analogy that of a water jug, when a water jug is being filled, it makes noise. And then when it's completely filled, it doesn't make any more noise. So Srila Prabhupada told us all recent drugged out hippies who sometimes would have woolen blankets over the devotees' heads like a teepee. And they would sit under that listening to Srila Prabhupada's classes as he would give classes 1966 and 7 about Sanatana Shiksha, the uh, opulent features of Krishna, the sweet features of Krishna, in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings to Sri Sanatana Goswami. And so he said, analogy means there are many, many similar points, but is a living entity to be compared with a water jug? The rock is also silent. Does that mean that it has become God? So Prabhupada, yes, he gave number one. And then in his books, we, we hear from Srila Gurudev so many confidential things. But then, to get more details about that, on Srila Gurudev's number two, we have Srila Prabhupada's number three, and then Srila Gurudev gives number four, and they go on together teaching us. For example, Srila Gurudev gave a very, um, he was giving very confidential discussions on Sri Galapakus Manjali to some of my um, GBC Khan brothers and other ISKCON senior members. And it was verse 5 of Galapakus Manjali where Srila Raghunath Das Goswami was glorifying the um, mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He took me out of the blind well of materialistic household life and delivered me and put my hand in the hands of Sri Sarup Tamadar. So I'm offering my respectful obeisances and take shelter of him. So there, and in other special verses of this Vilapas Manjali, the confidential prayers of Srila Rupa Goswami for the intimate service of Srimati Radhika, Srila Gurudev explained about how just as a Raghunuka Bhav Bhakti, Bhakta has three stages of consciousness. That is, uh, Antar Dasha, internal consciousness where he forgets his outer identity and just thinks himself or experiences like Rati Manjari. Raghunath Das Goswami forgets he's Raghunath Das Goswami and just is absorbed in his pastimes as Rati Manjari. And then that may break and then he goes into Arjubhadya to shop, half internal and half external consciousness, where he's weeping and not conscious of the external, but has, feels that he's lost the internal, so he's weeping and rolling on the banks of Radhakund. And then Bahir to shop, where he's conscious of the external world, but still feeling that separation. So here, Srila Gurudev is explaining that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also undergoing these three stages. So I thought, when I first heard that, back in the early 90s, wow, how deep. I've never heard this before. But then, just a few days ago, when I was reviewing that Gurudev's purport, he was speaking about how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would feel so much separation in the Gambira, and then, sometimes walk through the walls or 
leave somehow or other, and then jump into the sea, thinking that that sea is Jumuna, and then uh, when he would be awakened, then he would come into Archie Bagir, Kisha, half internal, half external, and speak like a madman to his associates. So I wanted to see more details of that. So I checked the Chaitanya Charitamrita, where Srila Prabhupada is speaking about that very pastime, where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left the Gambir. So this is Srila Prabhupada. Now, he gave his ABCs. For example, he told one of my god brothers who had a dirty bee bag, Krishna consciousness means to have a clean bee bag. He taught us to use two separate refrigerators for boga and prashada. He told me when I made Krishna painted with big bunches of hair, as Prabhupada called it, you've made Krishna look like a hippie plaything. Or he would say, if a pot has one black spot, even on the outside, it's not clean. So he taught us so many ABCs. But then, uh, wanting to see more about Srila Gurudev's description of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu jumping in the ocean, I went to our Srila Prabhupada's Chaitanya Charitamrita translations, which he did in 1973, 4, and 5, where he wrote such details that I'm actually shy to share that in this assembly, how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would leave in the middle of the night <coughs> and go to the seashore and then jump into the ocean and be swept away many, many miles to the Konarka temple and then sometimes being submerged, sometimes coming to the top and then he was captured by a fisherman in a net thinking that he was a big fish and then that fisherman touched the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and immediately began feeling ecstatic symptoms, asked the the kebabs. But not understanding them, he'd think that he was captured by a ghost. And so when the devotees went looking and looking for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when they couldn't find him, they thought he's lost, he's disappeared. And they themselves began weeping and were ready to give up their lives. But then they saw the fishermen shouting, shouting, like, a ghost, I'm I want to buy a ghost. And then finding what happened, they understood that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's body was lying covered by sand with all the um, joints of the body separated by over eight inches each, the upper arm and the lower arm and the upper leg and the lower leg. And then they, uh, he said, I'm an exorcist. He slapped him in the cheeks said some mantras, chanted Hare Krishna, and said, now, show us that body. So the fisherman felt, um, this is all the presence of Srila Prabhupada, because it's this translation. So the fisherman showed him Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and they awoke Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with the loud uh, Sankirtan of Hare Krishna. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in Srila Prabhupada's translation, right there in Srila Prabhupada's purpose, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in Antar Dasha, now he's in Arjubaya Dasha, half internal, half external, and weeping, and now coming out of that external consciousness, he's saying, why did you bring me here? I was enjoying, I was on the bank of the Jamuna River, and I was watching the Jamuna, and I was standing next to one gopi, who was showing another gopi the pastimes of Krishna and Radha and the other gopis in the kunj, I'm sorry, in the water, in the Jamuna. And the splashing and how the gopis looked like white lotuses, Krishna looked like blue lotus, and I'm shy to explain the splashing activities that Srila Prabhupada translated and into 50, over 50 languages and millions of copies all over the world. And in 1974, there was a controversy, just like there is these days about Srila Gurudev's books. There was a controversy about Srila Prabhupada's books. So many devotees, including those at Islam Press, which was the previous name of 
Bhag Jivadanda Book Trust. They were saying that only Srila Prabhupada's simple books should be distributed in mass and his Chaitanya Charitamrita are only for scholars and for devotees. So I wrote to Srila Prabhupada and asked if, he was this, if this was true and he said, no, I want all my books to go to all classes of men, just as Srila Gurudev said about his books. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining that after these splashing pastimes, the competition of throwing water, they came out onto the land, and then Prabhupada is starting to talk <coughs> about the maidservant's service to Radha and Krishna. The maidservants took them out of the water, they dried them, they dressed them, or oh, first they massaged them with uh, amlaki fruit oil, and other massage oil. And then they brought them to bathe again in the river. And then they took them out, dried them, dressed them, decorated them. They began to pick fruits and flowers. Then they peeled the fruits. And Shiva Prabhupada's translation gives an elaborate discussion of like 20 fruits, uh, and jackfruits, and coconut, and so many different kinds of fruits, and Radharani had already brought so many preparations of sweetmeats and other preparations from home. So now she fed that to Krishna and then after she took prasada and they took the remnants, then Radha and Krishna lied down in a jeweled pavilion and then the maidservants massaged their feet and fanned them. So as we have heard for so many times, everything is in Srila Prabhupada's books, but it was a puzzle until Srila Gurudev put all the pieces of the puzzle together. And we see in Raya Samba in Srila Prabhupada's translation, which Srila Gurudev used so much in the early 90s to establish that the goal that Srila Prabhupada and all of our acharyas wanted to give is the main service of Srimati Radhika. And he would quote Srila Prabhupada's translation that unless one is experiencing the ecstasy of the gopis, he can never enter in to Kunja Seva because it's only by the uh, intervention of those gopis that the pastimes of Radha and Krishna are nourished and expanded and understood in this world. And it was Srila Prabhupada who gave that Chaitanya Charitamrita. So surely he is an associate, just as he's an associate of Srila Gurudev and the whole Guru Parampara here. I once asked Srila Gurudev in the very early 90s, can we understand that you and Srila Prabhupada are serving together in the Nikunjas and of course with your Guru Maharaj? And Srila Gurudev said, no, you can understand that I'm serving under his direction, under him, and under my Guru Maharaj. So we can understand that as a follower of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami here in this world, he's also a follower of Rati Manjari and Rupa Manjari. As Srila Prabhupada said so many times, we are Rupa Nugas. So <clears throat> there, in that realm, I had no idea where Prabhupada was until I met Srila Gurudev. But now we know where he is in so many places, in millions of universes at the same time, on Radha and Krishna's roadshow, and in millions of universes at the same time, in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's roadshow. The uh, ISKCON GBC leaders were asking Srila Gurudev, how can we understand how Srila Prabhupada's form in Chaitanya Lila, and Gurudev said, you have to know that by bhajan. How he and the other associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are playing with him, joking with him, and joining with him in Sankirtan, externally, in the times of the day of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, dancing with him, and like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, absorbed in those times of the day of the pastimes of Sri Shiva and Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada is engaged 
in all those universes and in Goloka Vrindavan, in unlimited pastimes at the same time. In a few days or a day or two, you'll be going to Yava, and there Srila Prabhupada is engaged in the morning, bringing Srimati Radhika to her home when Radhika is complaining, why are you bringing me to the to the Nagani, my sister-in-law is just like a Nagani, a baby snake, and my mother-in-law is just like a snake, and you're bringing me to the snake pit when I'm so happy being unconscious. But the gopis want Radharani to quote-unquote suffer by becoming conscious and feeling separation. So then Prabhupada and the others, he comes and puts Radharani in the bed and then cleans her drains until she gets up and then just like you do for the deities, so Srila Prabhupada is doing for moving Radha and Krishna, giving them very soft, paste nectar to eat, to gradually waken them in the crunch, and then picking out the clothes in the morning, putting on the unguents, and along with the other manjuris, Prabhupada is reminding Srimati Radhika as she's putting on the different unguents and ornaments, how Krishna would comb her hair and how Krishna would decorate her hair and then looking at it he would faint because that braid would become like a snake and bite Krishna and then he would faint. Or they would uh, say how Krishna would put on, remind Radharani, how Krishna would put on her other eyeliner when she would only go to Rasalila with one eyeliner and one eye. So in this way, Srila Prabhupada serves the other sabhis and mantris in directly putting on Radharani's uh, unguents, ornaments, clothing, drying her hair with a towel, patting it dry so that the water goes out, and at the same time sharing the pastimes of uh, Krishna. I'm just coming to an end. Um, so, Srila Prabhupada said, he is Bhaktivedanta and I am Bhaktivedanta. It can be declared to the world that I am his successor, I am his only successor. No one in the world can love him as much as I do. And uh, during the, this marathon for uh, painting the outer uh, bus reliefs and behind <coughs> Takuji, those Bachi leaves, we would uh, go to Maturo and Shulab Gurde was performing the Kartik uh, month there. We had to stay here and finish the um, reliefs. So we brought Gurde the how they were developing the computer so that he could give further directions. And I said to him, you know, if you would have given us just one more month earlier to do this, then we could have done it more nicely, we could have gone to party, but instead you rushed us. I said, but then again, our Shula Prabhupada also rushed us. He put us on the two-month, 17-volume Chaitanya Charitamrita marathon. So Gurudev said, yes, he is Bhaktivedanta, and I am also Bhaktivedanta. I am no less than him. Confirmed by Shula Prabhupada that in the first canto, that the Bhaktivedantas <coughs> are without any partiality, no concern of caste or creed in bringing all the fallen souls who are becoming bacteria and worms in their next life and bringing them to the highest level of bhakti. So how fortunate that we are here under the shelter of Srila Prabhupada. Srila Gurudev said, even though our eyes can't see, Srila Prabhupada is everywhere. There is no place that he's not. So how fortunate we are that we can pray to him, we can pray to Srila Gurudev, who's in our heart. Satsuma Maharaj once told Srila Gurudev in 1991 that now that Srila Prabhupada is gone, I started asking my questions to my god brothers, but I find they all give me different answers. So I've decided to take shelter of Chaiti Guru on the heart. Is that all right? And Gurudev said, no, it's not all right. Although Chaiti Guru is in, our, in your heart, your Diksha Guru, your Prabhupada is in your heart. And he can answer your questions and give you guidance better than Shaiji Guru. I never have that, that illusion that my Gurudev is not with me. 
So how fortunate we are that by their mercy, we're here at the foot of Bogota, at the feet of uh, Radhakund in Braj, and learning all the intricacies of how to reach their lotus feet and attain their eternal service, and also learning the precision of Siddhanta. I was reminding Padmanabh Maharaj yesterday that in the morning walks book, he said to Padmanabh Maharaj, can you explain Bhavatavi just out of nowhere? And Padmanabh Maharaj said, Bhavatavi? Gurudev said, if you can't explain this, then I will think you are not a sannyasi. Means the forest of material enjoyment. And then Padmanabh Maharaj began to explain it. So through his, um, the mother teaches the daughter in law by teaching the daughter. So through his sannyasis and uh, preachers, he was teaching us all, and in his lectures to us, so much precision. He said, you have to understand the Siddhanta, either in this life or millions of lives later, before you can reach that perfection. So he's teaching us how to, by their mercy, we're learning how to reach their eternal service and how to preach their mission all over the world. Thank you very much for putting on the group. Neither Bhagavan nor Bhagavan's devotees can be controlled by strength. 
One time two wrestlers came to Madhvacha, tried to move his foot, they could not move it. They tried to throttle him and stop his utterance of prana, they could not throttle him. And these were the wrestlers who could shake the coconut tree and make the coconut straw, but they could not do anything to Madhvacha. But then a small tiny Brahmachari was caught and Madhvacari climbed on his shoulder and went Means he told that Brahmachari has devotion for me, he can carry me on his shoulder. But you will not be able to throttle me. We, our one finger is kept here, will not be able to utter pranam. We will have utterance in song. But Madhvacari was completely controlled by two, two wrestlers and they were perspired. So no one can be controlled by stress. Neither Bhagavan nor do. But Bhagavan can be controlled by love. So Uttana had the strength. Uttana is actually not a particular demoness. It is not a proper noun. It is a collective noun. Uttana is a class of demonesses. So this Uttana, she actually tried to separate Krishna. But she was not able. And Krishna kept on tugging her breast and finally took her life. But Mother Yashoda, she could put Krishna away by the strength. And then Krishna was angry. Oh, my mother Yashoda has kept me away, although my mother is not satisfied. Immediately got up and took the vessel and broke the pot. He broke the yogurt pot. He hit at the bottom. If he would have hit midway somewhere, some yogurt would have been saved. But he hit at the bottom. So the, so the bottom was all the yogurt came out. But Sri Vishnachari Thakurupada explains the expertise of Krishna. The good Jews are the Jews who do it silently. So Krishna was so expert that he didn't take any noise. Because if you are stealing something, if you are doing something wrong, then you must be very silent. Very, very silent, instantly you should do it. So Krishna actually didn't make the sound of his ornaments. It means if he had bangles in his hand, then he had raised them. Or some tricks he had, he had used, so no sound came. But Mother Yashoda is also the expert. Then Krishna slowly went into the next room. And when he, when he went to the next room, his fingerprints were, his footprints were there. So Mother Yashoda is also the expert in it. She could realize that Krishna has gone to the next room. Also the fragrance of fresh butter was coming from the next room. It means Krishna has broken the butter pot, which is hanging from the ceiling and is eating the butter. So Mother Yashoda silently went, keeping a stick behind, and she went to the next room. And she saw that Krishna was feeding butter to the monkeys, to the crows, and he had climbed on top of a grinding model. Now we don't know what grinding model is, because these days everything is mechanized. We don't know what this grinding model is used for. If you have some chip rice, that is how they used to make the chip rice. They will soak the rice in the water all night and they will put it in that <coughs> ulukha. It was called ulukha. And then they will pound it using the wooden vessels, they will pound it. So that pounding mortar, that was called grinding mortar. That grinding mortar actually was turned upside down. So it acts as a because Krishna's height is not so much. Even the stick could not reach the other pot. So he climbed on the grinding water and broke the yogurt pot. Now these monkeys came. Now these monkeys are Krishna's old friends. There were lots of monkeys. 10 to the power 88, means 88 zeros on 10. That was the number of monkeys. So those three monkeys assisted Lord Ramchandra. They did lot of hard work. Lord Ram was the commanding chief of Ram. He was the king and Sukriva's entire army from Nishkita had joined him. They worked very hard. It is the duty of the commander in chief to provide weapons, to provide clothes, to provide foodstuffs. All these things were provided by commander in chief. But Lord Ram was helpless. He was in exile. He had no royal presence to support his military expedition. So therefore, he could not provide facilities to the monkeys. But monkeys use their own weapons, they, use, they found their own foodstuffs by eating fruit and everything. 
and they somehow maintain their momentum and uh, finish the war. So Lord Ramchandra was very much indebted. Only favor he could give in uh, Ram Vila was he could carry this 10 to the power Indian monkeys in his airplane, Pushpa Prima. It was a multi storied airplane, 82 storied airplane. The first story was the sitting room, second floor was the library, third floor was they could play games, fourth floor was the dining room, and then the 82nd floor was they could drive their clothes. Understand? It was a very big airplane, not considered by Boeing or uh, any other company so far. Uh, but, um, and that airplane didn't really did well. Understand? And always one seat was empty. So any amount of passengers came, the one seat was empty. But then what happened? Oh, when these monkeys, they wanted to go to attend the uh, ceremony, Raja Vishay, the anointment ceremony of Lord Ramchandra, the airplane came to Nishinda. Then Sita befriended the wives of monkeys. The monkeys' wives came to the power of monkeys and then came to the power of their wives. They also wanted to join. So then the airplane was expanding. It was elastic. Immediately more seats were created and none was denied the sight of Ram's coronation. But monkeys, that was the only favor they got. And some gifts Sita Devi and Ramchandra bestowed upon them. But then Ramchandra was deeply indebted to this monkey. And he told, all right, I am going to I am going to give them some butter. Before I eat, I will feed them. So this monkey used to come and he used to give them butter. Then the crows also had come. These crows were not ordinary persons. These crows were the descendants of Taka Bhushundi. Taka Bhushundi was actually a devotee of Lord Shiva in past lives. He regarded Lord Shiva as superior to even Ram and Krishna. His guru told him, listen, Shiva is actually servant of Lord Ram. Because the food was water, that is coming from the lotus feet of Ram and Devi, head of Shiva, by his Ramani head. So Shiva is subservient to Vishnu. You shouldn't think that Vishnu is superior. Because Shiva is superior. But he, he rejected his guru also after that. So this was a very big offense. One time this particular Brahman was sitting in the Kashi Vishnu temple. And when Guru walked in, Oh, he didn't even get up. Actually, as soon as the elevated personality comes, we should get up, offer him obeisances, and uh, show all respect. And when you do Guru Avakya, when you disrespect your spiritual master by not getting up and criticizing him, verifying him, then even Lord Shiva, who is the original spiritual master, could not tolerate it. Said, you should go to Kriya Yoni, you should go to animal species, bird species, for one thousand lifetime. But Guru is very much. Guru then saw that this particular boy doesn't know the idea. But nevertheless, he has accepted my shelter and I accepted him. The disciple may reject the Guru, Guru cannot reject the disciple. So the Guru told, Oh Lord Shiva, whatever it is, is impudent, but he is my disciple, please show some mantra. Lord Shiva said he may want to one thousand species, but final species will be a pro and he will be a great devotee of God. That was Taka Bhushundi. That Taka Bhushundi was sent to actually, when Guru developed the pride, the Lord Ram was bound by the serpent, serpent arrows of energy. And that time, no one could rescue Lord Ram and Lakshman. So Narada came hurriedly to Vaikuntha and told Guru, you should quickly go there. And when you go there, the serpent and arrows of Meghanath and energy they will disperse. So when Guru came there, all the snakes went there. But Guru developed a pride. Is this Ram and this Lakshman, they are the supreme personalities of Godhead? This pride came, this doubt came. So he went to Lord Shiva. He said, this doubt has come in my heart. I am challenging the supreme, I am doubting that if the Lord is the supreme personality of Godhead. Lord Shiva told him, it's a very dangerous thing. Although Lord Ram in a human form is a supreme Lord. And when doubts come, you should hear Raita. So he was sent to Taka Bhushan. Taka Bhushan is the lowest of the bird because it's a crow and the highest bird is eagle. So, but Guru is now hearing Raita from the crow. So that Taka Bhushan is descendant who is living for many, many kalpas. That Taka Bhushan is descendant when this crows and Krishna was hearing them. But when Mother Ashwana came, 
Krishna could see from his side on glass that Mala has come. And immediately he jumped off the boat. And he could also sense that monkeys were scared as they were going away. The crows all flew away. Then he realized someone has come. And that was Mala Yashoda. So Krishna immediately jumped off the grinding water and began to run. He came out of the palace. Mala Yashoda also came out of the palace. But Mala Yashoda, she is running slowly because she has feminine growth here and there. Because of her feminine beauty, she could not run so fast. But she had made up her mind and she was running. Then Krishna came on the highway, Raj Maharaj. Now, generally, a woman from respectable family would not run on highway. But that was the Deepavali day. And as you know, Deepavali day is the day on which everyone is celebrating. All the streets were deserted. All the Prajavasis were very happily celebrating the festival of lights. So, Mother Yashoda, she lifted her breath and she saw that no one was there. Because the women in the respectable families, they are very long to them. And they generally don't show their face to anyone. But today, when she lifted the veil and saw no one was there on the highway, only Krishna alone was running, she began to chase him. And she began to chase him, and Krishna was very scared. She had a stick in her hand, and she was running the stick at him. Finally, she caught hold of Krishna from behind. So the word used by Satyabhat Muni is Parambhushya, from behind. This shows that there is so much Madhuri, there is so much human-like sweetness. And Krishna was now very scared. So she thought, I should not beat him. So she threw away the But he is very scared now. And generally what happens, when the boys are scared, then they leave the home and they just disappear. So now, Krishna would disappear in the forest and would not come for three or four days home. Then what he would eat? And there are so many wild animals in the forest. Like Mother Yashoda, when Krishna goes for tower, he tells him, Vatsa sthavra kandari shivikara dure pracharam gavam nyusra mirsha purahar purisham narayanam bhasrati Ittyuttasya shodayana maripur vyajjanam tishpurat vimboshthat praya So, Mother Ashura will tell Krishna, if you see any wild animals in the forest, you will go to Narayan. And Krishna wants to control his mind. He says, I am the source of Narayan, but Mother is telling me to remember Narayan when I see any wild animals. So, Mother Ashura is scared that if he disappears in the forest for two or three days, then he will not be seen and I will be again troubled. So, better to bind him to the grinding mod. Krishna is a khala. Khala means he is wicked. And Ulu khala. Khala word means wild, wicked person. And this branding water has assisted. So the culprit and the accomplice both should be bound together. Both should be punished. So she took the silk ribbon from her hair and wanted to bind Krishna. Krishna's dress is very thin. And she could easily bound. According to the material calculations, metrology, you could actually bound Krishna. But Krishna was not to be bound because he exhibited his transcendental offerings. And then Mother Ishoda tried to get so many ropes, but still it was two fingers short. Explaining that there is Krupa and Cheshta, both are required, as in the Dhamma Sampada, Market Nyan and Margar. So, 